Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. I'm Mark. I'm here with Steve in our studio in beautiful Prescott, Arizona. And Steve has got a very cool treat for us today, which I know a little bit about, but I really don't know exactly what he's doing. So I'm excited to see. So why don't you just take it away? Here I have this, uh, this sequence, this timeline open. I've got some basic dialogue clips in here. I have some room tone. I have some sound effects. I want to work with the audio. So how do we prep our soundtrack? for Pro Tools and or Logic, whatever one you want to go to. Well, the first thing you want to do is you're going to want to go and do some basic cleanup of your audio. I'm going to select this first clip and I'm going to hit Command 4 to open the inspector. And the reason I want to do that is I want to go down to the audio configuration. You're going to want to make sure you turn off the channels that you're not using mm -hmm. and only leave on the channels that you want. Mm -hmm. Because the more channels you have enabled, the more stuff that gets sent to Logic and or Pro Tools that you don't need. It just makes a cluttery messy. timeline, messy yeah. timeline. So you want to clean it up. By the way, this is I set this for dual mono because there's no point in sending a stereo version of this file mm -hmm. over to Pro Tools or Logic. There's, there's no point in it. It's a, it's a dialogue track. But other tracks, like this doorbell, that's a stereo sound effect. So if I select that, you'll notice here I left it flagged as stereo. I see. Now, when this gets ultimately sent over to Logic, or Pro Tools, it, it gets broken out into separate channels, but it's left and right. So mm -hmm. those programs do understand that they are truly a, a stereo Starian. file. Okay. okay. Well, but more on that in a minute. What, what I'm saying is you have to take the time to properly configure all your tracks mm -hmm. before you do anything. I okay. notice you also have your timeline index open. Yes. This is the, the biggest part of what I'm about to show you is setting up your role assignments. Let me just go up here to the clip menu, excuse me, modify menu. When you go into assign roles, you generally have uh, three options, dialogue, music, and effects. You're going to want to be more specific than that mm -hmm. for them to show up properly in these other applications. Okay. So what I did is I created some sub roles. So I'm going to go into edit roles. I'm going to show you here. If I click dialogue, I created a separate sub role for one of the characters. That's the guy, mm -hmm. Billy, and then the, the, the pretty girl at the front. Her name's Nicole. So I created separate dialogue sub roles for that. And we've covered that before, but you just click the plus button down there. Yeah, and just to add the, the sub, roles, sub roles. But I also did the same thing for effects. I wanted my effects to be broken down more specifically. So uh -huh. I created uh, a, a role assignment for just the room tone. I see. Right? So the, mm -hmm. the audio editor, when it gets it, like, oh, that's room tone. I, you know, I could leave you that can alone. Separate or all that out. Exactly. Uh -huh. And then I have a separate role for sound effects. Uh -huh. So I just it just makes it easier. And this is just one way working. By the way, this isn't my method. This is a, a method I got from Mike Matstorf, our good friend on The Vug, who also yes. was the assistant editor on Focus. Focus. So yeah. the guy totally knows what he's doing, and he, he spent a lot of time with me, and this is his workflow. Nice. So if I'm nice. not representing it properly, Mike, I'm sure you'll let yeah. me know. But this is his workflow. And your, your, yeah. your sub roles are all listed there in the timeline index. Yes, they are. In fact, let me cancel. Let me show you why this is important. With the timeline index open, now I can select, let's say, Billy. And it immediately shows me all the clips that are sub rolled or tagged with Highlights that role it. assignment. Mm -hmm. If I click Miss Nicole, there's just pretty much only one clip of her because we only see her in one mm -hmm. shot for the scene. Mm -hmm. But if I go down to like click on room tone, I could see room tone. Click on sound effects. I can see all my sound effects. And ooh, I noticed something. Over here, there's a shower sound effect that I used that I downloaded from it's a It's not site. highlighted. It's not highlighted. So this is what's great about the, this timeline index. I can select this, then go up to modify, and I can just say assign role. Let's set that as a sound effect. Uh, it has the role of effects, but it doesn't have the sub role assigned. Right. Got so it. I'm, I'm yeah. assigning the I'm several. assigning the sub role. And you can also do this the inspector too. And it highlights. So, and it there you go. so now I know, okay, great. Let's just assume for a moment that I have everything. Right, properly roll tag. Yeah. Okay, good. Your audio configuration is correct. You've turned off any extraneous channels and you've got all your roles and sub role assignments done. Yeah. Now, I did a lot of this manually, but you could also do this on the shoot if you have the proper recorder. You could do a lot of the uh, for the advanced XML, you could you could do all this ahead of time. You don't have yeah. to do it after the fact. I'm just showing you that you have to have it role right. assigned if you want it done. to Okay. So, now, one last step I, I recommend uh, if you're sending this to a sound editor, he or she's going to want a reference video track so they, they can reference while they're doing the mix. Yes. So what I'll do is export out the video clip and I'm just gonna enable that. Notice I included a time code generator. So you've included the, the built-in time code generator that's, that's right. in the generator's browser. Okay. Right, so they have a visual reference and that's yes. just kind of standard Absolutely. Fair. I mean, that's something you want you to do. You need to talk to each other and you can reference exactly the right frame. And you can open that movie in Logic or Pro Tools, mm -hmm. so well, it works really well. I've already taken the time to do that, so I'm not gonna do that here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and disable that. Um, 
let's assume I've done everything that I need to do and now I'm ready to create export. So I'm gonna okay. go up to File Menu and I'm gonna go down to Export XML. XML. Mm -hmm. And I, what I'll generally do is make a separate folder. Let me, um, let's see here. I'm gonna create a new folder. I'm gonna call this uh, Second Date. If I hit the cap lock, date mm, mix. How's that? All right, I'm going to create that second date mix. Click create, and it's going to take that project, append it with XM, Final Cut XML, and I'm going to go ahead and save that right into that folder there. It takes uh, depending on how long the scene is, it's going through and it's you know, spitting out parsing a text doc, parsing it all mm -hmm. out. Okay. Now, let's talk about not using any third-party translation software, and just let's see what if I what happens when I open this logic. Okay, just directly open directly the XML open this, logic. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I, I think the audience would be interested in seeing. Sure. All right, so what I'm going to do is jump on over to Logic. Actually, I already have it open here. This is actually good that it's open because it saves me a step of having to okay. do it. But basically, I went over here and I said open, and I navigated to that XML file. Okay, it's not import XML. It's just file open, and then you select the XML file. Right, exactly. Okay. So you just bring in that XML. Now, the XML workflow between Final Cut 10 and Logic 10 is not the best. It doesn't handle certain things properly. Hmm. Or it just so like for example, if you look here, it brought every. I'm going to make this a little smaller. It brought everything in as tracks. You see them here. You can see there's my dialogue mono, dialogue mono, and here's my first problem is that it it brought this in as is a dialogue roll tagged track, but also had Billy. But I really want that Billy separated out into its own track. It just kind of threw it generically together in one track. I see. See. It's, it's, it's not ideal. I could work with it, but it's not ideal. But there's a bigger problem. If I go down here to this Nicole Mono, she says it, when you saw me assign it as Mono. In yes. fact, did you not see me do that? I went mm -hmm. up and I signed it as Mono. Yes. Well, look at this. It came in essentially as a stereo. stereo. Okay, I, I, see can't, I can't separate these out. Okay, so I've, I've shown you kind of two, two issues that I have problems yes. with. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and close this. I've already exported the XML, so I'm not going to have to do it again, but yes. I am going to use this third-party piece of software called X2 Pro Audio Convert. Yep. This software is pretty amazing, and there's two versions of it on the App Store. And let me go jump over here. There is a uh, LE version and a Pro version. There's certain things that the Pro version offers that the LE doesn't, and you need to be aware of it. Right on their side here, and they, they give you a little mat matrix here, but this is important. Embedded media can be trimmed. You've got to be able to be able to trim yeah, the media, yeah. all right? Um, media can be referenced rather than embedded. So in other words, you can have an external media folder and you can have point a to those. point to that. Okay. Well, you can't do that in the LE, in the LE version. version yeah. And here's a couple of other things. You could choose the order in which the roles and sub roles are exported. You'll see that in a moment. It's okay. huge. I could say, I want the Billy track here. I want the Nicole track here. You so, can't, so you can really organize it. You can it really correctly. organize it. Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you want it? A professional is going to want to do that. I don't yeah. want to just kind of slam, a, you know, pretty much just spit out a bunch of tracks and they're all over the place. It's, yeah. I can move them around in logic, but why, do I, why should I have to do that? Yeah, and you can do right, it right, right so, here. Exactly. So look, this, I just want to kind of paint oh. the picture for why you'd want the pro version. Yes. All right. Um, okay, so let's go over to X2 Pro. Let's see where it is. And um, let's go ahead and close that down. And let's browse to the XML. It says source file, Final Cut 10 XML. So we browse there. I go to the, I think I saved it on the desktop. I called it second date mixed. There's the XML file, open. So I'm pointing it to it. Yep. Now, it, what's gonna happen is that X2 Pro is going to convert that XML. It's gonna convert it into what's called the advanced authoring format. Basically what this is is a, is a format that's, I think I think of a trans application format that it, different applications can read that it has complex metadata and media inside of it that these different ap applications can open and take advantage yeah. of. What's really nice is you can tell that when it happens in translation how much handles you want on your so audio. That handles. So okay. like for example, your audio meter is like, can you at least give me six seconds of trim or five seconds of trim? On either side. On either side. Okay. That's kind of important yeah. for the audio Absolutely. editor, right? Roles, this is important. Keep sub roles separate. That's why I went through the time to make to all the sub roles. So, place, so when right. it comes in, I'm going to have all my roles properly named exactly where I want them. Check this out. If I click roles, here are all the roles it's going to be across. Look, there's a, you can, 
affect the order. I mean, I want maybe I want Billy to be the second one from the top and the third uh, one down. Okay, so you can reorder them. I can okay. reorder them. Nice, nice. So I want Billy at the top because he's he's the star of the scene. It's I want him. Thing. I want yeah. him at the very top. Yeah. Then Nicole. Then my sound effects, and then some miscellaneous dialogue, and then room tone. I don't give a crap about that. Yeah. I could be at the very bottom. Yeah. Okay. So pretty good, huh? So Excellent. Yeah. Now, so last thing I do is click start. Start. And there it goes. You, you can see the media going into that folder. It's parsing everything, bring everything in. And in very, very short time here, we should get a project with all our Boom. tracks. Boom. Now check it out. Notice the Billy is right there at the top where I yep, wanted it. Just what you set right it up. Right how I set it up. I can open this up. I can see there's the mono. It's, it's all really easily organized. I can see there's my sound effects. See, there's my left and my right. There's a stereo doorbell. There it is. Okay. And then over here, there's my, the rest of my effects. Notice they're all on the same track. My clothes rustling. Remember that? Remember that one I didn't assign about the, the shower? Uh -huh. Look, it even uh -huh. put it on the same track. There's the shower. Oh, wow. Uh-huh. Okay. So, in terms of organization, it's much cleaner going through X2 Pro than sending, you know, the straight so XML away. Yeah. Now, yeah. I could have spent more time in cleaning this up because, look, room tones at the bottom, that's great. I can, I can hide some of these tracks. We don't, I'm not going to go into the full Logic Tour. By the way, I should point out, we're working on a full Logic Final Cut Pro sound mixing tutorial, and that's, it's on its way. And we've had nice. people asking for it for some time, and this is going to be incredible. We're going to show you things that you, that you, can do in Logic, they right. will blow your mind. Which might be out by the time you watch this. Yeah, on the uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah. So that's really all I, oh, all I wanted to, no, no, that's it. That's okay. all I really wanted okay. to show, just how you get your stuff cleanly from Final Cut Pro into Logic. So for folks who are using a dedicated audio person to do their mix, to do their sweetening, either in Logic or in Pro Tools, X to Pro is really the way to do it, to deliver something that is a very, solid starting point for them. It's a solid to do starting that. point, yeah. Now, there are probably people out there that are kind of myth that it this it wasn't work at this level with Final Cut and Logic, but this is Why isn't it all built in? Why isn't yeah. it all built yeah. in? What what would your answer be to that? Well in general, I think Final Cut it, for three hundred dollars has a, a, a huge amount of functionality for, you know, some eighty percent of the market. Right. And then there's parts of the market that need more advanced features. And there's a very robust third party community who's come in and created tools for that market. Right. And if you add up the cost of three hundred dollars for Final Cut Pro plus two hundred dollars for Pro, for for Extra Pro, I mean it's still incredibly inexpensive to create professional production uh, with these tools by using third-party pieces where yeah. where required. Otherwise, you could build them all into Final Cut and make Final Cut a thousand dollars, and eighty percent of the people say, "What do you give me all this stuff? I don't need for." You know, so I, it's a different approach. It's yeah. an approach that says, "Hey, you know, this most of the market needs this, and for these other pieces." Here's solutions. Yeah. Well, this piece worked perfectly well for the guys who did Focus and yep. the, you know, the same directors that are working on the next feature right now. Um, yep. It's a perfectly viable solution. works works really well. I know Sam Messman swears by it. And awesome. Mike swears by it. So there it is. Great. Well, I learned a lot here, and I'm really looking forward to the tutorial because um, like many video editors, I need to know more and work more with sound. Yeah. Even if I use a third party, I like to get more educated about what I'm doing. So this is great. Hope you guys found that useful. Ripple Trainings, where you can get all this good information. Check us out on the website, rippletraining.com. On YouTube, we do shows every week. Mac Break Studio, Under Fives, tons of information out there for free that you can get, and in-depth tutorials on our website, Facebook, Twitter, all the good social media stuff. So thank you for watching Mac Break Studio.